Hi, I'm Matthew Tan, and you're watching Imagine TV Network. Well, I was uh, very pleasantly surprised, of course, you know, because I never thought that uh, the, the, the thing that I do is so newsworthy for the Singapore uh, Library. This is a little hard to explain. Uh, it's a feeling that I had from a very young age because my dad and uncles used to play a lot of uh, music by the country uh, singers at the time. The, the life that I was having at that time, you know, uh, hardships and where, you know, you, you have to go through uh, poverty and things like that. So a lot of uh, country music are sort of relatively connected with, with my lifestyle. I became a musician uh, quite by accident, you know, I mean, you, you, you were thrown into it and then you just love what to, to do and when you start getting job and getting paid for it and, you know, you then start to think about <laughs> you know, doing it seriously. Oh no! It was the furthest from my mind because actually I was very skeptical about it because uh, I know that in Singapore no one would believe there's a cowboy, you know, and they would definitely take it from the wrong meaning of the word cowboy because uh, to to Singaporeans and to people basically in Southeast Asia or Asia, they would think a cowboy is a cow person, you know. But uh, at that time in America, the the reference of a cowboy was more like a musician. In America, it was cool to relate cowboy, you know, and I thought to myself, okay, uh, there's nothing else to, to refer to me as because I sing that, their songs and uh, the closest thing is cowboy, so and why not Singapore cowboy, you know, but uh, when I wrote it, I, it was just just uh, uh, to get myself known to the American public more more than Singapore public. When I came home, I actually was, I never thought that I would be recording the song because um, I was afraid, you know, I think that people would laugh at me and say, you know, this guy's crazy, there's no such thing as a cowboy in Singapore. I was actually very happy with the song because uh, it all fell into place. So the words and the melody was just so fitting, you know. Uh, when my friend completed the words, after I related my story to him, I, I was really in awe because in, in two verses, it told the whole uh, story of the, how I got into this this uh, industry. Well, that, that has been my, my dream ever since I really started uh, entertaining, you know, and I always listen to a lot of the music that came from Nashville. In my own personal capacity, I pursued it by buying the, the country records and I listened to a lot. The word Nashville gift and then of course as I grew up a little bit older, I read about the, the history, the news and and then I kept thinking to myself, you know, maybe one day I want to go there and, and do some recording and learn more about this stuff. I, I saved the money and happened to to to, to save enough to told myself, I said, look, you know, it's time for me to go and uh, get closer and find out what I can, you know, uh, be, be in that industry itself. Of course, family, friends, you know, uh, then comes food, you know. Uh, I was happy where I was. Of course, you get homesick in the sense that sometimes you can be lonely. Many times, of course, I always think, you know, do I want Shall I, shall I just pull up and go back, you know? Uh, then of course then I tell myself, no, I come all this way. It's, it's just uh, not me, you know, to, to throw in the towel so fast, you know? I, I, I want to make sure that I, I really get something out of the trip. In the musician field, I've met uh, one of the top steel guitar players who used to play for Conway Twitty and uh, Ronnie Millsap and Bubba Mandrell and all these people. His name is John Huey. Uh, he was going on to a, to a recording session. He says, come, just follow me, you know. And uh, we became very good friends and he was involved in all my, my recording in Nashville. Of course, Keita Davis, you know, I met her uh, on the Grand Ole Opry and then I met, met the, uh, some of the producers there and uh, people like Owen Bradley, you know, the, he, she produces Betsy Klein, Brenda Lee, everybody, he's a big, really big, big time man. La. He gave me a few few advice here and there la, and I think it make, make a lot of sense. That's the reason why I started thinking I should start to write, you know, that's how I 
got into writing, you know. We, we need government help because no commercial company, record company or, or production company will be able to do it without the, the big help of the government because the government has all the networks in their hands, you know. I think that they have to stick to their guns. They must be prepared to, to suffer a little bit, you know, because first, they must have a, a job to sustain them. Don't give up whatever job they have, but hang on to what they believe themselves in. You know, if they like a certain kind of music, they should, should pursue it. Thank you.